right. <clears throat> okay, recording is on. Everyone, welcome back to our second lecture on uh, BC 308. That's our course on Revelation and Daniel. We are in Daniel chapter 12. Uh, we just covered the first three verses. And we are going to uh, go forward from here. Right? Um, any questions so far in Daniel chapter 12, uh, verse 1, 2, and 3? Um, I just want us to, you know, um, just go to uh, Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10, or maybe we'll do it to when we are in the book of Revelation. Um, yeah, maybe. Uh, um, okay, maybe let's just look at it now and we'll also do it again when we look at Revelation 12, you know, um, uh, Revelation. So, in, uh, you know, at this moment, at the end of time, right? At the end of the you know, three and a half years when Jesus returns, when Christ returns, uh, that's the, at the Battle of Armageddon which we, we will read in Revelation 19, Zechariah tells us how the Jewish people will, uh, will respond. Uh, and I think it's very, you know, very, uh, uh, he, 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 he puts it down in a very, very powerful way. So keep your hand in Daniel 12. Uh, let's go to Zechariah chapter 12. Uh, I just want to just look at it. Uh, we, we, we will look at it again when we go through Revelation. Uh, but if you go with me to Zechariah chapter 12, and uh, um, uh, verse, uh, verse 7, if you follow with me from verse 7, actually, you know, we could read a lot, a lot of these scriptures, but I'll just read from verse 7 to 11, okay? Uh, Zechariah chapter 12 verses 7 to 11 i'm just picking up uh, a short portion here it says the lord will save the tents of judah first so that the glory of the house of david and the glory of the inhabitants of jerusalem shall not become greater than that of judah in that day the lord will defend the inhabitants of jerusalem the one who is feeble among them in that day will be like david and the house of david will be like god like the angel of the Lord before them. It shall be in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. And I will pour on the house of David and on, and on the inhabitants of Jerusalem uh, the spirit of grace and supplication. Then they will look on me whom they pierced. Yes, they will mourn for him as one mourns for his only son and grieve for him as one grieves for a firstborn. Verse 11, in that day, there shall be a great morning in Jerusalem, like the morning at Hadad Rimon in the plain of Megiddo. So the plain of Megiddo is where the battle of Armageddon will take place. Right Now, uh, uh, we can look at all these verses in detail, but basically, in that day, referring to this, this day of the Lord, the battle of Armageddon, Israel is going to be, it says, like it says here, you know, the house of David will be like God, meaning it's almost like here's a nation that will be invincible. When you've got all the armies of the earth uh, coming together in, 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 in this big battle, and uh, uh, the nations are coming against Jerusalem, and it's almost like here's a, a, a nation that cannot be shaken, cannot be destroyed. It'll be like God. Why? because the Lord himself is going to come and defend his people. That's why. And then it tells us in verse 10 that the inhabitants of Jerusalem, they will look on me whom they pierced. You know, that's just a, it's a very touching picture of what will happen. It says in verse 10, Zechariah 12, 10, you know, God says, I will pour out on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, people living there, 
the spirit of grace and something. There's going to the Holy Spirit is going to come upon them. There's going to be a move, the Holy Spirit among these people, and it says they will look on the one whom they have pierced. Yes, they will mourn for him as one who mourns for his only son. Now it's like um, these the people of Israel. They're going to suddenly realize that the Jesus who was crucified, whom they rejected about 2,000 years ago, is the Jesus who has come to deliver them. He's the one who's come to protect them, the house of David. That time he came in a very humble way. They couldn't recognize him. They crucified him. Now he's coming as the mighty king to protect the house of David, the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And they'll realize, hey, this is the same Jesus who we rejected. And they will mourn. I mean, there's going to be that, uh, um, you know, uh, that, of course, turning to God, but also, uh, uh, I, I, I can't find the right words, but like the feeling sorry that, Lord, we did this to you. And they'll look on the one whom they have pierced. Zechariah 12, 10. When is it going to happen? You know, verse uh, 9 and verse 11 describe the scenario when the nations are coming against Jerusalem and they're all fighting there in the plain of Megiddo. That's when this is going to happen, right? So going back to Daniel 12, in, in, in verse 1, when he says, there's going to be this trouble since there never was. And then he says, and at that time, your people shall be delivered. So that's the deliverance he's talking about, Zechariah 12, 10. You know, when the Lord himself will descend. You know, and chapter 14 talks about him coming on, uh, the Mount of Olives, and the Mount of Olives splitting into two. So uh, it is the Lord defending his people. And there will be many people who will be saved. I'm talking about the, the, the people of Israel who will embrace Jesus as Lord at that moment. Okay. Anyway, now let's pick up from verse 4. Okay. Everybody's, everybody's with me so far? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to pick up from verse 4, Daniel 12, verse 4. Um, I just want to um, make one announcement. Uh, we will, uh, I won't be doing the next class, which is, uh, what is that? Media and Technology and Ministry, okay? Um, I've just been having a lot of work to catch up on this week. So I'm going to take that time to just finish up some uh, church work and you're getting ready to reopen services and uh, all of those things are there all happening at the same time so I just need to go finish up that and so uh, I, I we will skip the next class on media and technology okay I will put that I'll put a notice out on the classroom uh, I just wanted to inform us <clears throat> we will pick up next week and uh, we will be able to cover ground uh, on media and technology, okay? Um, <clears throat> verse 4 uh, says, But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. Now, this is amazing. So, the angel is telling Daniel, Daniel, Close the book. And whatever you've written, close, sorry, close it, seal it, meaning don't change anything. You know, what's written is written. So this book, whatever the vision I've given you, seal the book, no more changes, until the time of the end. I mean, all of these things, he's, I mean, these things he has spoken to us, or spoken to Daniel, which is, of course, we are reading it now, is for the time of the end. And then in verse 4, he 
tells us something about the time of the end. What does he say? He says, many shall run to and fro. So this time of the end, what's it going to be like? He says, many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall increase. So two things. Many are running to and fro. Now, of course, in Daniel's time, um, there were no trains and there were no airplanes. Right? So Daniel couldn't have said, well, there are going to be people traveling all over the world in airplanes or anything. But he just said, many are going to be running to and fro. That means he's seeing people going all over, crisscrossing the globe. He's saying like, okay, so people are just you know, running to and fro. But we can understand it today that it's talking about increased travel. Okay? It's talking about this huge um, mobility of people globally. And that is so true today. And it's getting more and more. I mean, aside from what we have seen during the pandemic, uh, the travel restrictions, uh, under normal circumstances, uh, travel has increased and continues to increase more and more. So people are literally going to and fro. Now, Daniel used the word run, but he's basically seeing people moving to and fro all over the world. And then he says, knowledge shall increase. Now, uh, what we know is that there is, there is this explosion of knowledge like uh, never experienced before in the world today. And especially because of uh, technology, uh, the infrastructure, the mobile phones, information as generally speaking, generally speaking, uh, data. The amount of data in the world, I think, uh, and I, 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 I had to check this up, but it doubles, I think, every two years or something like that. Very, very fast. The amount of data is doubling every, you know, so so fast. And information is also increasing so fast, the knowledge, because there's so much research and study and all kinds, all kinds of fields. Knowledge is exploding. Data is exploding on the earth like never before. And the, the time for amount of knowledge or information to double has become so short, right? So if the time, if, if you look at these two indicators, people traveling, going to and fro, and knowledge increasing, if you look at these two factors as indicators of the time of the end, uh, we can say, hey, we're definitely, you know, in that time. Now, how much more will this increase? We just have to wait and see. But uh, everything seems to indicate it's going to get, you know, exponentially increase because of the kind of work that's being done, the kind of improvements and advances we're making in technology and in, in, in things that are happening. Travel is going to increase so much more, and uh, knowledge is going to increase so much more. And that's these are signs of the time of the end. Okay. So then, verse five. Then I, Daniel, looked, and there stood two others: one on this river bank, and the other on that river bank. That means two angelic beings. Uh, and one said to the man clothed in linen who was above the waters of the river, 
how long shall the fulfillment of these wonders be? So they are having a conversation. Daniel is listening and they are discussing, saying, hey, uh, when is all this going to be fulfilled? I mean, all this that, in that has been revealed to Daniel, uh, when is going to happen? That's verse 6. Then verse 7. Then I heard the man clothed in linen was above the waters of the river, and he held up his right hand and his left hand to heaven and swore by him who lives forever that it shall be for a time, times and half a time. When the power of the holy people has been completely shattered, all these things shall be finished. Now it is very interesting. This phrase a time, times, and half a time. We have seen it before. And this is, uh, uh, I'm looking at Daniel chapter 12, verse 7. He says, it shall be for a time, times, and half a time. That means for three and a half years. Three and a half years. Time, times, half a time. One plus two plus half. Three and a half years. Now we saw this in Daniel chapter 7 and verse 25 when he said it will be for a time, times and half a time. And then we understand that's exactly half of 7. And that means the second half of the tribulation period. So all these things that he had just spoken of is going to be fulfilled in that second half that which we, we mention as the Great Tribulation, the time of Jacob's trouble, the times of the Gentiles, right? A time, a time, times, and half a time. When the power of the holy people will be completely shut. That means that is the time um, the holy people, referring to God's people, Israel, they, they're going to be so crushed, so devastated, you know, during that time, that three and a half years until the Lord Jesus comes at the end of the three and a half years and uh, delivers them. And they're going to be completely shattered during that time. Although I heard, so verse 8, okay? He says, although I heard, I did not understand. Then I said, my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? So Daniel hears this time, times and half a time, and he's, he doesn't understand. Now, you and I understand it because we have the book of, you know, we have Daniel, we have a lot of, you know, the epistles, we have the, uh, we have the book of Revelation. So we could put all this together and, uh, you know, have some sense of understanding. But Daniel, of course, says, I don't know, what is he talking about? Time, times and half a time. And verse 9, he says, and he said, go your way, Daniel. For the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. In other words, Daniel, you know, that's all I'm going to tell you, or that's all God is going to tell, you know, reveal to you. Just do what you're told. Write all this down. Close it. Leave it as it is. Don't change anything. It's meant for the time of the end. You know, and I'm sure, you know, when God revealed these things to Daniel, he fully intended for you and me to look at it, study it, understand it. So God was having you and me in mind when he was giving all of this revelation to Daniel so that we people who are living towards the time of the end would read it, do our best to understand it, depend on God, of course, to understand it and do our part to research and study. And, but he kept it there for us so that we can understand it and be ready. But when Daniel said, you know, I want to understand it, he said, Daniel, don't worry. Your job is write it, seal it, keep it, because it's meant for the time of the end. Verse 10, many shall be purified, made white, and refined, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, 
but the wise shall understand. So look at it, it says the wise shall understand. That means the things in the book of Daniel are intended to be understood. You know, some people say, hey, no, 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 I can't understand the book of Daniel. Well, look what it says. It says, the wicked will do wickedly and the wicked won't understand. But those who are purified, made white, refined, that means the people who are, you know, letting God work in their lives, the wise shall understand. So it's meant to be understood. But the wise, that means we look to God and we know that wisdom comes from God. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of understanding and wisdom. And so the wise will understand. So it's meant to be understood. Uh, of course, we need the wisdom of God and we need to do our study and we will understand. And then last three verses, he says, he gives a little bit more insight. He says, and from the time that the daily sacrifice is taken away and the abomination of desolation is set up, there shall be 1,290 days. Interesting. So now he's giving precise days. So he says, from the time of the middle of the tribulation. So that's the time the daily sacrifice is taken away and the abomination of desolation is set up. That means this Antichrist sets himself up in the temple of God. So that happens exactly in the middle of the tribulation, three and a half years. Antichrist sets himself up in the temple of God. That's the abomination of desolation. And he's going to stop the daily sacrifices. So it says from that time, there will be 1,000, 290 days till the end. Blessed is he who waits and comes to 1,335. So another 45 days. Okay. So um, 1,290 days. Then he says, another 45 days, but you go your way till the end, for you shall rest, verse 13, for you shall rest and you will arise to your inheritance at the end of the day. So he says, Daniel, you go, <laughs> you go your way. You don't worry about this because you, will, you shall rest, meaning you're going to die, you're going to rest but you will arise. You're going to be resurrected to your inheritance at the end of the days. Now, that means this is the end of the tribulation period. You will be raised to, you know, uh, you will be raised so that you will be able to come into your inheritance. Now, He is talking about two different sets of days. He's talking about 1,290 days. And then he says, 1,335 days. You know, 40, giving another gap of 45 days. Now, I have uh, put in the notes, so I'm just gonna share, share the screens because it's good to, if you see it, it's easier. Um, yeah, so in the, uh, as I shared here, in the Bible, in the scriptures, we see uh, the certain days and time given with respect to this tribulation period, right? So first, first of all, we know three and a half years, a time, times, and half a time, or even it's given very specifically, 42 months, Revelation 13, verse 5. Okay, 42 months, if you calculate, 3 years, 12 times 3 is 36, plus another 6 is 42. 
So exactly three and a half years. So this three and a half years is 42 months. Uh, this time, times and half a time, it is very clearly given in scripture. Then we also see 1,150 days, which we have seen earlier. That is 2,300 evenings and mornings. So evenings and mornings, 2,300 divided by two, because that's half a day. So for a full, two, for a full day, it's 1,150 days. What will happen? It says for that number of days, sacrifices will be stopped. Temple will be desecrated. So from the middle of the tribulation, where the abomination of desolation sets himself up, till the end of the tribulation is 42 months. And uh, uh, again, see, um, uh, approximately uh, 1,000, depending on how you calculate it, it could be 1,278 days if you calculate 42 months, approximately. Uh, also, keep in mind, Jewish calendar, I mean, if it is going to be according to Jewish calendar, uh, in the Jewish calendar, there's only 353 or 54 or 55 days in a year. English calendar is 365, uh, approximately, some, you know, 365 and a quarter days. So there's the slight difference. So, you know, but these are the, this is what we have given to us. So for 1,150 days, this sacrifices will be stopped. We also see 1,260 days from Revelation 12, Israel will be protected in the wilderness. So that's when I mentioned, you know, most likely it could be that uh, uh, one third of the Israelis may go into hiding in Jordan most likely because they have been protected there. We saw from Daniel 11 also that the uh, the region of Edom, Moab, and Amen will, will escape. So it could be that's where they are protected. But Revelation 12, very six very clearly says 1,260 days. That is that's within that three and a half years. You know, three and a half years, if you look, 1,278 days, if you count it by the English calendar. This is probably a count using the Jewish calendar, 1,260 days, Israel will be protected. So it is most likely that at the end of 1,260 days from the day the Antichrist sets himself up in the temple, from that day, you can count 1,260 days. That is when the Lord Jesus will return. Now, these are days that are given to us specifically in the scripture. And we're not talking about the rapture. We're talking about Revelation 19, when the Lord comes to defend Israel. So if Israel is preserved or protected for 1,260 days, at the end of that, the Lord will come to defend Israel. So, over here. Now, these two sets of days, 1,290 days and 1,335 days, these two sets of days fall outside the three and a half period. Because, uh, you know, if you say three and a half years, it is, uh, if you calculate it by English Gregorian calendar, it's 1,278 days. If you calculate it according to Jewish calendar, it will come a little less. It'll come maybe around 1,260 days. Uh, it'll dip, it all depends on you know which year it is, but it's coming around that. So these two days fall outside that. So there are extra days. There are from 1,260, there's another 30 days. And from here, there's another 45 days. So why is that? Now, this is the 
only explain i mean this is uh, i wouldn't say only but uh, this could be an explanation that this extra 30 days could be used for the cleansing consecration and rebuilding of the temple could be okay i'm not we, we can't uh, we can't uh, prove it uh, we're just making an intelligent guess okay it's only a guess so we're thinking you know what is the use of this 30 extra days and 45 extra days right uh, what is the use of that why is he saying that because if you go back to daniel chapter 9 and over there he says uh, verse 24 daniel 9 24 he gives us certain things the in the last part of verse 24 daniel 9 24 he says look this prophecy that i'm giving you includes to bring in everlasting righteousness to seal up vision and prophecy that means to fulfill our prophecy and to anoint the most holy to anoint the most holy or the holy place if you see in the margin it says to anoint that means to consecrate the most holy place so again i'm not saying conclusively but i'm saying this 30 days is the time to consecrate or to anoint to clean up the temple and get it ready to be anointed and one example we have is and i forget which king but in one of the kings i think it's king hezekiah or i forget who he postponed I may not be king as a guy, I forget. He postponed the celebration by 30 days uh, in the temple because the temple had to be cleansed and consecrated. So we have that example in the Old Testament. Again, I'm not saying that that is uh, that was uh, necessarily a prophetic act in view of this. No, I'm just saying there's a precedence where 30 days was taken to clean out the temple and consecrate the temple before it could be used. So most likely these 30 days are days to clean out the temple because it has been desecrated, you know, for during this time uh, to clean it out and uh, 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 cons to anoint the most holy place. And then another 45 days, there's another gap here, which pr probably is to bring in everlasting righteousness it's to, for the inauguration of the millennial reign of Jesus Christ. Again, these are just intelligent guesses. Okay, we can't prove it from scripture. I'm just using Daniel 9.24 to say that these are the things that are going to be fulfilled. Therefore, we are looking at these dates. Okay. So but these are the numbers that are given to us in, in the Bible. Clearly states three and a half years, 42 months. Clearly states 1,150 days or 2,300 evenings and mornings. Clearly states 1,260 days for Israel to be protected, which means at the end of that, uh, the Lord will come and deliver his people. And then we have 30 days and then another 45 days that are given. Okay, so um, just wanted to uh, talk about that a little bit. Uh, oh. Okay, so going back to Daniel 12, he says, uh, uh, verse 11, from the time that the daily sacrifice is taken away and the abomination is set up, there'll be 1,200 and 90 days uh, and then there will be verse 12 blessed is he who waits and comes to the 1335 days that means 
you know, you, if you come there, that's very blessed. So maybe that's the beginning or the inaugural or inauguration of the millennial reign of Christ after the cleansing of the temple and whatever preparations that need to be done. Uh, there's this happening. Okay. And he says, Daniel, you will come to your inheritance. So we know that, uh, you know, uh, in the millennial reign of Christ, uh, the saints will rule on the earth. All the Old Testament saints, I mean, all the people who are saved in the Old Testament will be there. And um, all the New Testament saints and all those who have died for Christ in the millennium will be raised up and we will all rule with him in the millennium. We will look at, look at that in detail in the book of Revelation. Okay, so let me just quickly review the book of Daniel. In Daniel chapter two, so I'm just talking about the, the prophetic part, the end time prophecy part. In Daniel chapter two, there is Nebuchadnezzar's dream. He sees this image, head of gold, silver, chest, waist of bronze, waist and thighs of bronze, feet of iron, sorry, legs of iron, then feet that are mixed iron and clay, and then there are 10 toes, and then a rock that was not, that man didn't hew comes out of the heavens, destroys this whole thing, becomes a big mountain. So the book of Daniel begins with that image or that dream. And then Daniel interprets. Daniel says, the head of gold represents the Babylonian empire. Then another kingdom will come, which will over, take over from the Babylonians. Then another kingdom will come, which will take over from the previous kingdom. Then a fourth kingdom will come, which will be more powerful, the legs of iron. Then there will be a fifth kingdom, which will be a mix of iron and clay. And it is during the time of that fifth kingdom that the God of heaven will set up his kingdom here on earth. Yeah. So that's how it starts. Then we come, of course, in Daniel chapter five, there is the handwriting on the wall, which is, uh, you know, which happened the same day, the kingdom of uh, the Babylonian kingdom under Belshazzar collapsed, the Medes and Persians took over. Then in Daniel seven, Daniel has this vision, he records this vision where he sees the four beasts and he has, so that in that vision, um, it's told him very clearly that uh, the second beast represents the Medes and the Persians. And then the third beast represents the Greek. Uh, the fourth one, he's not mentioned, doesn't tell us Romans, but Roman Empire, but we can understand that was the empire that came into power the next after the Greeks. And uh, therefore, uh, we are quite interested in the region of the world today that was a part of the former Roman Empire. And a major part of that lies in Europe, uh, part of it across Northern Africa, and part of, part of it into um, where Turkey and uh, part of the, part of the Middle East around the Mediterranean. They were all part of the former Roman Empire. The reason we are interested, we look at interest with those that region is because uh, in, in the very first image, uh, out of the mix of iron and clay uh, came 10 toes or 10 kings or 10 leaders. And when thou, those leaders came into power, then came the little horn, which is the Antichrist. And it was in that time that the God of heaven established his kingdom. So we look with interest around those areas, uh, countries that were part of the former Roman Empire. Uh, so 
that is Daniel chapter 7. In Daniel 8, he gets a close-up view of uh, the, uh, the, the, the ram and the goat, representing the Medes and the Persians and the Greek. And there's that uh, uh, vision. And we get additional details in Daniel 8 that uh, the goat, representing the Greek empire, was very powerful, grew very fast, the horn grew very fast, but that the horn was broken. And out of that came four kingdoms. And out of one of those four kingdoms came the little horn or the Antichrist. So we know, and there was these four regions that came out of the Greek empire. Uh, one was broadly speaking around Greece and the neighboring countries. Uh, then there was, again, broadly speaking, there was um, uh, Syria and Turkey and Egypt, you know, and we could probably include parts of uh, 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 Persia. So just we look at those broad areas because out of one of those areas, because the Greek empire was broken into those four broad areas, where the four generals of Alexander's uh, kingdom were ruling. And what we see in Daniel 8 is from one of those comes the little horn or the Antichrist. So we look at that with interest and, you know, we see what, what, what happens. Um, but in Daniel 7, we also see that uh, the God of heaven sets up his kingdom here on earth and the saints rule with him, with the Son of Man, that is Jesus Christ. Daniel 9 is when we, uh, when we learn about the 70 weeks. Uh, 69 weeks have already been fulfilled from the time King Cyrus gave the order to rebuild Jerusalem till Christ. One period of seven years is left, which will then take place during the tribulation. So that's Daniel 9. And then we come to Daniel 11 and 12, especially the latter part of 11 and 12, where we get some more insight into what will happen when the Antichrist comes into power and so on. Okay, so to, uh, to a fair degree, we can understand uh, a lot of these things in the book of Daniel. It's pretty clear. Uh, I'm not saying, you know, uh, we know everything, but we can understand things to a fair degree. And things become even more clearer as we get into uh, the book of Revelation and say, okay, yeah, these, this, this is the details. This is what will happen. Okay, so our next step is to get into the book of Revelation uh, and, and, and understand that. Uh, but have you have you been able to follow me through the book of Daniel? Kiran, um, is that a question in the chat where you're saying uh, God was revealing about tribulation day uh, will happen in the book of Daniel, Revelation, some other books, or were you making a comment? I'm not sure. Is that a question or, or a comment? Okay, not a question. Okay. Okay. All right. So, uh, uh, you know, take some time to read through these uh, main prophetic passages in Daniel. And uh, I've tried to put as much as I can in, uh, in the notes. Of course, it's an outline form. It's not an elaborate description of everything. Uh, but the notes will be useful for you when you uh, uh, try to study these chapters once again. Okay, so we're going to close in prayer. And uh, like I mentioned, uh, we will not be having the next class, Media and Technology and Ministry. I will, uh, I will put a note over there. Uh, we will do the class next week. I just need to catch up with, uh, uh, with the work here. We're, there's, there's a lot of things to finish and I will prepare and uh, you know we will get back on track um, in media and technology a lot of good things coming up okay so um, let's uh, close in prayer next week we will get into the book of revelation it's going to be an exciting um, journey through the book of revelation could somebody pray and then we will dismiss please 
Lord, pray for us there. Yes, go ahead. Thank you, Lord Father, for um, giving us opportunity um, to learn the book of uh, Daniel and the book of Revelation, Lord. So whatever we have learned, um, thank you for um, giving us uh, your understanding. And Lord Father, whatever we are going to learn more, Lord, um, show us mystery from your hidden word. So that, Lord Father, we will stay fast in our faith and fix our eye in you, Lord. So, Lord Father, bless everyone and I accept the grace of the day into your loving name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Okay. Thank you, everyone. Have a good weekend. And um, see you again next week. Thank you. God bless. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Bye now. Bye.